everyone. Um, I'm here to talk to you about our journey uh, through J. Ipstop. So, uh, my name is Antonio. I am one of the five Java champions. Uh, so I've been uh, working with Java for a long time. I've written books, blah, 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 blah. I do plenty of things, but one, one thing that I do is I also run DevOps rounds. And that's, that's what I will be talking about. So when you organize a conference such as DevOps, um, you have to think of several things. First, you need a website. That's pretty easy, you know, we started with WordPress and then you need more things. Uh, you also have speakers, you know, um, a conference like DevOps attracts a lot of people. Uh, the first year we had 200, uh, 200 speakers, uh, you know, applying for 300 talks. Now we have more than 1,000. So every year we need to pick up 200 speakers out of thousands. Um, how many talks about Java? How many talks about uh, such and such uh, technology? So we created a tool called Call for Paper. So the, the speakers can log in, uh, add their bio, abstracts, the talks, we vote, we exchange, etc., etc. So we created a tool called Call for Paper. Then comes the D-Day, you know, who will be speaking on Wednesday from 4 to 5? Uh, what time is the coffee break? So when you have a small conference, it's easy. But when you have a big conference, it's difficult. So we created a tool called the scheduling. Um, dealing with venues also is not easy. You know, we do that at the Porte Mayo next door. We have one floor, we have eight rooms with different constraints. This room, you can't go in the morning, but in the afternoon, blah, blah, blah. So we created a tool this year I will be talking about. Ticketing. You know, you need to uh, register at DevOps France, but you are 3,000 of you, and you arrive with emails and paper printed in, and sometimes people have uh, watches with QR codes. Um, and you have 3,000 people arriving in one hour, so it has to be smooth. We created an app called Ticketing. Um, scanning. When you have your ticket with your QR code, sponsors want to scan you. We created an app for that. Sponsoring all the back end. Uh, we need to contact our sponsors. Do you want to be a sponsor this year? Yes, no. Do you want to be a platinum, gold, blah, blah, blah? We will make you a discount. No, sorry, etc., etc. So we created an application for that. Accounting. We need to create an invoice. That sounds obvious, but before we had to send an email to our accountant and he will create the, the PDF for us. And we went... You know, I don't want to do that. We created an app for that. Uh, uh, that's the beauty of uh, being a developer while running uh, a conference. Something is missing, you implement it. Tweet wall. Between talks, we show funny tweet walls. Mobile app. We have an app, so you have all, all the scheduling that was created. Digital signage on every room. You have a digital signage saying... At this time, you have this conference. And the next one is that conference with this and this speaker. And we rely on plenty of third-party uh, libraries, like sending emails. We use Mail, uh, MailChimp. Uh, signing contracts. We use uh, DocuSign. So we use plenty of APIs. And there's several people doing that. So I am the organizer of, De of DevOps Front, so I'm, I'm an admin. But we have people uh, working with us, uh, our team members. They have certain roles, but they are not admins. So we have plenty of roles. Uh, it's quite complex sometimes. And uh, DevOps France is in France, but there's not only uh, DevOps France. There's DevOps in Belgium, historically it comes from there. UK, uh, Morocco, and Poland. And all these bits and pieces are deployed a bit everywhere, to be honest. 
uh, on Amazon, on Google Cloud, and Level Cloud. As I said, we've created that, you know, we started seven years ago, and we use a little bit of everything. Uh, at the moment, we still have Play Framework, we have MySQL, Postgre, a lot of Java. Uh, we have plenty of things around. Perfect. Microservices. Yeah, except it grew up organically. It started seven years ago on our evenings and weekends. Um, you know, we have little boxes, but they don't talk to each other. Because, you know, I created this box and three years later I created this one and I didn't create a link on that. So we have no uh, communication uh, between our boxes. No SSO. You log in on one box, well, guess what? You need to log on on the second box. And the user and password is not the same. Um, no multi-tenancy. So that is a bit painful. Uh, the call for paper for DevOps France is a different one from DevOps Belgium, not multi-tenant, so we need to deploy as many uh, call for papers, uh, scheduling apps, um, as many DevOpses. So it's not multi-tenant. And we started that seven years ago. You know, I think seven years ago we didn't have Docker. Uh, so you know, it's uh, either good old war or good old jar, and it's a bit painful to to deploy. And to be honest, I am fed up of Polyglot. Each time you go to a microservice uh, conference, they tell you, hey, use whatever language you want. Use whatever database you want. You, you just do whatever you want. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's little Joe. You know, we, we are not many people. I had to write some play. I'm ashamed of that, but I did some Scala and some play. Uh, you know, I don't want to do that. You know, so we have plenty of technologies, and at the end of the day, it's difficult to maintain them. That's when we decided to move to Java Hipster. <laughs> so we have some black box and dash boxes. The dash boxes, the venue, the accounting, and the sponsors didn't exist last year. And we needed them. You know, we were using Google Spreadsheet and so on. So we thought, we need three new boxes. Let's use jhipster. So we created these three boxes uh, this year. So the sponsor, to manage all the, all the backend sponsoring. Venue, you know, as I said, to describe a venue with all the constraints. Accounting. And Stefan Jensen, uh, the guy from DevOps Belgium, he created something also with Jay Ipster that he calls a deployer. You know, as I said, um, our tools, our old tools, are not multi-tenant. So when I want to deploy a call for paper for DevOps France, DevOps Morocco, DevOps Belgium, I need to do it by hand. Plus, it wasn't containerized. So Stefan, uh, and he has a very good talk. Uh, he did that at DevOps UK. And I think he picked up on Ray's brain a little bit. I think he mentioned that. Um, so he did a lot of work with uh, Docker and Kubernetes. Watch his talk. Is you know, it's quite funny because he tells you, I created the app in one day thanks to Jay Ipster. Then it took me five days to, to have a decent Angular uh, component because he's not a web guy. And then he took you know, a few weeks to automatize a deployment. So imagine you are on a web app and you go, I want to deploy um, the call for paper for DevOps France, bang. It automatically deploys on Google Cloud Platform, your database, your app, um, Elasticsearch, and so on. So this deployer was also created by, by Java Ipsa. Um, and we created a link. <laughs> so when we make a deal in the sponsor app, it invokes a microservice. Please, can you generate a PDF file for the invoice? And we added a key clock everywhere. So now we have SSO. And we on those three, four apps, we added uh, ELK. 
So this is our history with, um, you know, I've started using JIPster a little bit uh, before, but as I said, we've created three apps. Uh, Stefan created a fourth one. Um, so this is our year and something long of experience with JIPster. How did you, how did we use JIPster? What worked, what didn't work? We ended up with this uh, vocabulary between us, the prototype, the bootstrap, and the side-by-side. -side. Uh, prototyping, I'm sure we all do that. You want to quickly test something, and you throw away. You know, that's what also Jay Ipster is good at. So I use Jay Ipster to generate some code, you know, technical code, because I want to see how Kicklock works, and I want to deploy it and do a hello world. Or, and then, you know, I throw it away. It's, it's prototyping. Um, something that was very useful for us, uh, we didn't have a lot of time to write uh, requirements and specs and etc. etc. It was really organic. It's on GitHub. We have issues. So it was really good to test our model. We create our JDL, generate some code, and go, mm, this is not right. Mm, no, a little bit more like this, a little bit less like that. And then we throw it away. So that was also good. And, and we still use this prototyping approach uh, today, as many of you do. Then um, we started one project with this bootstrap approach. Stefan also created this deployer with a bootstrap approach. So we called it bootstrap. Um, so the idea is you bootstrap some technical code, you bootstrap your model with JDL, and then you change the code. So what happens is we have the, JD, the JDL, we create some code, and then we change this code. And because we don't have thousands of pages of specification, we change the JDL, regenerate new features that has new classes, and then we change those classes. This didn't work out on the long run, so what happened is, thanks, we, we created, we used this bootstrap, bootstrap uh, you know, approach for the deployer, which is a very small business thing, very technical behind because it pushes Docker and Kubernetes quite far. But in terms of business, it's quite simple. And we create, and we use this approach for, uh, for the venue, which again, in terms of business, it's quite easy. But we got stuck very, very quickly. We had to stop um, updating J, J Ipster frequently. The merge were getting harder and harder. And at the end, we stopped uh, merging. Uh, we stopped upgrading J Ipster uh, because we wanted to, to focus on, a, on our app. Our two apps are still there, up and running, and they will keep on like that. But this bootstrap approach, we ended up quickly facing a wall, you know? We were changing too many things on JEEPster code. And then for the two last projects that were slightly bigger, we were prototyping new, new approaches and we came with that, what we call the side-by-side. -side. So the idea is very JDL-centric. Uh, we changed the JDL. Um, we, re we regenerate the code quite frequently, you know, uh, technically and business also. Uh, and we don't change this code. And when I say I don't, we don't change, we only change on two, uh, two areas, very, very, very tiny spaces. Um, and, but the idea is you don't change the generated code. But you develop your own code side by side. So this is how it works. We have the JDL, we generate some code. JIPSA generates all the business and technical classes. And what we do is we create our own, either really on the side, or as you will see, extending JIPSA and generated classes. The good thing with that is, you know, as I said, our model changes 
very often because in terms of business we are we are di uh, even discovering our business so we changed the JDL the JDL is our uh, you know main point of reference that generates new classes oh sorry um, and again we create new classes and change them um, this is what we've done on, on the other two projects, the sponsoring and the accounting. Um, and we will keep on working this way. I've actually, uh, the, uh, this week, that I, I, I did that. I regenerated our code with from JIPS to 4 to 5, and it works kind of okay. Um, because we extend some classes and sometimes we did things we were not supposed to do well, you know, anyway, but uh, we will keep on working like that. Let's take one of example. Uh, so we have an organization, Ipon, and we have contacts, uh, Julien, Geoffrey, because every year we need to call them and say, hey guys, do you want to sponsor? Uh, DevOps France, yeah, but if we have a discount, oh, sorry, we haven't coded this feature yet. Um, so <laughs> next year we will. So an organization has one too many contacts. This is our JDL that we update. You know, maybe one day we will have discount code or not. Um, um, and as you know, JHipster will create the domain, so one, one organization has several contacts, a repository, a service, a REST endpoint, and on the Angular side, uh, it creates a few components, service, some uh, you know, model, and, and JSON for the internationalization. And you know, it works with slash API. What we did on our server, oh, on our side-by-side -side code, is we extended the re uh, repository. So here I'm calling it organization repository extended. This is not the the noun that we used. We gave it uh, the name of our internal name of our tool, but I just put extended so for you it's clearer. We actually extend from the repository. We do the same thing for the service, and as you can see, the extended service injects the extended repository. We have another REST endpoint. Unfortunately, it can't extend from uh, the organization resource because Spring REST will not allow that. And same thing, on the, um, on the front website, we do not touch the graphical components generated by Java Ipster. We create our own. So therefore, we need a service. And the service extends from the generated code of JIPster. And unfortunately, and I will talk about that later, we need a new resource path. Again, we didn't call it like that. I'm putting here slash API slash ext. So you understand that it's two different endpoints. And again, if we need to change the internationalization message, we create a new JSON file. Uh, and here we have a little trick to, to override uh, the one. So the green box, it's our code. So just to show you some code, um, the organization repository is this code generated by Java, by JIPSA. Cool. Unfortunately, we need a new query. Um, what do we do? We create a repository that extends. Okay, the red is the one below extends from the one at the top. I can create a new method with a new query. Same for the service. The service generated by Java Ipster is this one. We create our own that extends the service. And as you can see, our extended service injects our extended re uh, repository. Same for the resource. Um, we create a new one. Unfortunately, uh, we can't extend from a resource. Um, 
And even for us, and I will talk about that later, it's, it's better to have two different um, resource paths. So here I'm putting slash API, slash API extended. But, you know, I will finish on that because that was a pain point for us with JIPSA. And on the Angular side, it's the same. We create our components because they are completely different. Um, we leave all the components from JIPSA, which are really handy, and they give us CRUD uh, representation of our model for free, but we don't use them. We create our own components. And same thing for, um, for the service on the Angular part, we create our own that it extends uh, the one from Angular. I come from a Java background, so for me that was kind of okay, but no, because it's TypeScript and it's transpiling into JavaScript, you can't use the same you know, the same uh, methods like, you know, here you have a constructor, the HTTP client, it's called HTTP. Well, on TypeScript, you can't call it the same. So you, you have to change names, et cetera, et cetera. You know, anyway, just to tell you that also on the Angular part, we create our components from scratch, but we reuse the services from JIPSA. And as I said, we have, um, we have different apps and we also learned uh, with Java Ipster and, and the latest app the, that we created, the venue, the one that handles the venues, we added DTOs. Uh, so we have our own DTOs, our own mappers and exceptions. So four different apps, four different ways of working with J, with J Ipster. What did we learn? Um, the first sprints we started simple with a monolith, with J, uh, uh, a WT, liquid base quickly, we saw it was a bit painful, so we uh, we were changing our models so often that we we avoid liquid base on the first sp sprints. Um, we use query filters, uh, that was really handy, uh, a very good feature on, on J Ipster to use query filters. And then we added our side-by-side -side code. Components, as I said, a repository, services, endpoints. On the latest prints, so our model was changing less, less uh, regenerating code and so on. The good thing is, you know, 100% of the j Ipster code, we didn't touch it, so we, with a not a lot of efforts, we moved our code from being a monolith to a microservice because we were extending uh, J Ipster classes. So it was quite easy to do. We moved our business logic from a monolith to a microservice in a very easy way. Again, we put you know, key cloak. We started using a uh, liquid based change set, which is still a bit of a pain. Um, and we had it some tests because, uh, to be honest, at the beginning we were just f focusing on our business code, and then we moved uh, pr uh, into into the cloud. So, what did we learn from our one-year experience? Different ways of working. Um, <laughs> the first project that we created, we put everything in it, you know, because we are. Uh, we were thinking of DevOps France, DevOps Morocco, DevOps. So we had seven languages, we have everything. And we went, damn, you know, <laughs> we spent a lot of time uh, dealing with code, changing code that we will be using one day, but not now. Uh, so our new project, we start with no tests, uh, one language or two languages, Macs, etc. We We try to shrink uh, the technologies at start and add them later because it's easy. We don't uh, change the JIPSA code. So if we want to create, add a new language, it's like that. So let's do it later. Uh, our JDL is very important. Uh, we never touch the generated code, only in rare, you know, uh, you know, occasion. We with this technique, we update JIPSA every time. Even now, you know, from four to five, it was kind of easy. We have one, one old app that we uh, created was using entities. Now we use DTOs. 
much better for the front side, even if you're on, you know, on the back, it's a bit painful. We use query filters all the time, that's so good. Uh, something we, we learn quickly is, no, no matter if you are in the first sprint, always run a prod build, always, always, because you know, on the front side, we discovered weird things, you know, the web designers, etc. weirdos. Um, introduce languages later. Oh yeah, we love Prime NG. You know, we know the guys. I used to be a JSF fan, so I used to use Prime Faces. Prime AG components are fantastic. We love them. PostgreSQL is a fantastic database. I think John said that. We discovered that Postgre is just amazing. Uh, we store our invoice in JSON, and we use full, full text search. Postgre allows you to do full, full text search. Uh, you know, at the beginning we were using uh, Elasticsearch for full text uh, because J, J Ipster, you know, allows it. But when you go on the cloud, you, you have to pay to have a Postgre and to pay to have Elasticsearch. And you go, you know, I can do the full text search on Postgre. We use the same DB in dev and in prod. Uh, we used to do H2 and Postgre. We go full Postgre. We stick to Jay's Ipster. Docker is good for dev. We use it a lot, but actually on the cloud, we don't use it. Uh, we deploy the jar file. Um, yeah, and we learn to reduce the number of technologies. When you are on the cloud, any box you tick, you have to pay for it. So my, uh, microservices are difficult enough. Uh, each service has a cost in the cloud, so we... Okay, time to wrap up. What's missing? for us to be very happy with our side-by-side -side, um, technique. Better directory structure, uh, for us it's quite complex because we have a no, uh, an organization service, but we need to extend it. How are we gonna call it? Either in a different package or not. So we came up with ideas using the Angular suffix on the front side, but it wasn't you know, great. Richer model, that's the missing point. We've extended everything, but not in the model. So we need more things. You know, the one too many unidirectional, that's a, an issue that is 50 pages long. An invoice has invoice line. A quotation has quotation lines. I don't want that to be bidirectional because the problem with the bidirectional is the JSON uh, when you serialize it into JSON, you have an infinite loop. So you have to cut it somewhere and you cut it on the wrong place. You know, an, an invoice line, knowing the invoice is useless. You know, I want my invoice to know all the users, uh, to, to know all the invoice lines. More best practices. Uh, we, re we realize that in JEPster, there's a not a lot of exception handling on the service side. So we came up with our exception handling, but we thought, oh, it's a shame that JEPster doesn't do that. Flexible endpoints. And again, there's an issue 50 pages long. Slash APIs is for us. The, ex the APIs that we, uh, we expose, everything generated by JEPster for us should be slash internal. I don't want to expose that. So a flexible naming on the slash API would be perfect for us. So all the JEPster would be slash internal. Our APIs will be slash API. More post-grade sort of support. Um, yeah, and Mathieu will talk about it. We would love the JDL to do everything for us. So hopefully the version 2 will do it. Uh, some things that we would like to contribute back, you know, lack of time, but... The full text search with Postgre is fantastic. Uh, you know, I don't want to add elastic search just to have full text search. So we have a bit of expertise on that. We would love to give it back. And something we have to talk about, but we talk a, a lot about technical things. Hey, we have a lot of business things. We have all the countries in the world in our database with all the latitude and longitude and the zooming and the flag and everything. Uh, same for the languages, same for the currencies. That's business code that, you know, we would love to give you the JDL, the data, the, the little GIFs and everything. That should uh, benefit for everybody. So maybe not only technical code, but 
also some business goals that we could share. And I'm going to end up uh, with, um, we will rewrite some bits and pieces. So we will go through J. Ipstermonti in the near future. Thank you.